class. just this class. Uh, yeah, Every this day. one, and I have another from from eight thirty to ten thirty. Okay. Any big care? How was your certification today? It it wasn't scheduled for scheduled for ah, today. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I got confused. Ah, okay. It is. It was scheduled for tomorrow at ten a.m. So. Okay. Um, Are you nervous? A little. A real, uh, I wanted to um, finish with that today, but I have to wait one more day. So I will tell, uh, tell, uh, I will tell you all. And um, how is how was it going tomorrow okay. uh, on the class? Right. Uh, okay. The exam would uh, will be at the same hour or the same yeah. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very Maybe, good. Uh, but, but, okay. but we will have time to um, to speak and to talk uh, before that exam. Or yeah, of course, we are going to have the exam okay. at the end. Okay. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your was your certification about? Cassandra asked. Thank you. It, it is a, a certification that the company. Uh, makes every three months to the uh, team leaders that are bilingual and uh, and also they do it because they want to confirm if the the classes they are providing us in this situation these classes here in speak uh, are uh, are producing useful. results mm -hmm. yeah are useful uh, for us so I need to pass the certification every three months to be able to proceed as a bilingual team leader. Otherwise, I have to, to return to, to Spanish. And that is, that, is that, that, that would be terrible, of course, yeah. because the salary is less. So is this gonna be your first uh, certification? Uh, and once you yes. pass, it's only one, one time. Yeah. This is this is the first since I am a team leader. Mm -hmm. Okay. So good luck tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I uh, in spot at October. I got, I yes, I got the the position of supervisor, and because I was on classes since June or May, if I don't, uh, if I don't remember, uh, they brought me the chance to be a lingual supervisor this time. But I have to pass the first certification. So uh, my next year's success depends on that certification because I I need to, to be a bilingual supervisor because of the size. Okay. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, yesterday, uh, for the ones who who were not here in the class, uh, we studied uh, a new topic. We already have the file on Schoology. It's week number three. Yeah. I mean, were you able to check my, my homework um, yesterday? Uh, I saw it. Oh, OK. I saw it, but I, but I haven't checked. Uh, anything okay Thank you. yeah it's there okay mm -hmm. okay so hi uh, hey johnny how are you i'm fine teacher how about you all good thank you hi Victor, guys how are you hey. hi guys hi um good. How are you guys? Can you can you use the same uh name, Victor? Because it says Edward. Oh my god. Let me I don't know where <laughs> I can change that. Because today I use my I installed um Zoom up on my laptop. Mm, okay. Uh, so I I 
Are you Do you see the ellipses? Brown. Victor, do you see the ellipses that you have on top? Yeah. Okay. There's yes, an option yes, that yes. says rename. The ellipses. Mm -hmm. Bro. The three little dots, right? <laughs> uh huh. The rename. Yeah, there's an option no, that says no. rename. Meeting. Meet, meet Show name when participant join. Oh, let me look for that. But go ahead. I will. Okay. All right. Okay. Find a way. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what should we be afraid of? Okay. Yesterday, Lisandro, we were talking about. Uh, well, we started talking about fears, right? And and the first question that I asked. Uh, was uh, what are you afraid of? That was the first question. What are you afraid of, Lisandro? I think I'm still afraid um, to an scenario, especially when you uh, when you have a crowd place, <laughs> and then sometimes you have a big, you know, that you are representing someone or, or you are representing an idea, and you want to mm -hmm. give the best of you and and you want to. <laughs> Um, mess it up so yeah uh, but but if you feel uh, yourself uh, prepare and 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 then if you have the knowledge I think it's something that you can manage but still is yeah it's terrifying I think. yeah Brady how are you hi how are you guys all good Okay, so uh, do you remember the question I asked you at the end of the class uh, about uh, Bill Gates? So what do you think he is afraid of? So some of you gave me uh, a point of view. Well, Victor, right? Okay, so, but what do you think, for example, Sandra, what do you think Bill Gates is afraid of? I will say that he's afraid to lose all his money. <laughs> okay. That would be, be, <laughs> <laughs> be a big problem to, uh, uh, to him if that happened, because imagine um, him living with like $10 a day. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm, I not agree with that. Uh, at the first time I, I saw, I, I thought the same as uh, Lisandro, but then uh, I changed because, you know, uh, this, this kind of people are that smart, that intelligent, that they can lose everything, everything, and they will make it fastly, um, even more. So I don't think that that is a, a the big big afraid of Bill Gates. That's what I think. But okay, I all right. I would like to say that this uh, type of people is always afraid of wasting the time because mm -hmm. they are very efficient with their times. Uh, so I will say that they are afraid to waste their time. Yeah, exactly. I agree with you, Walter. Uh, Freddy, uh, I don't agree, okay? Uh, we I don't never, agree. I don't agree. Yes, yeah. we, ne we never use the, the, the verb to be. Yeah, yeah, right? I think that does. And uh, fast is an adjective, but also can be a, an adverb, okay? So fast is adjective and also it's an adverb. Okay, so right. we do not add ly at the end. All right. So it's the same word. Okay, well, um, I have a video for you. It's a, an, an interview and uh, you'll see uh, what uh, Bill Gates is afraid of. Time. Time, <laughs> you already know it, right? 
I, yes. I think you, you you watched the video this this same video before. I I told you yesterday yeah. that I watched the uh, documentary on mm -hmm. Netflix about Bill Gates. Um, I recommend to you to watch it. Okay. Inside uh, Genius Mind, Bill Gates. Something like that is the name of the documentary. All right. So here we go. Guys, please uh, take some notes because later you're going to have uh, an exercise about this. So here we go. Why don't you describe for me as vividly as you can what it is you're worried about, what it is that the nightmare scenario looks like. Unfortunately, there's very few things, and most of them are very low probability. Uh, you know, some big volcanic explosion, uh, gigantic earthquake, asteroid. Well, at least in the nuclear case, you've got to say we take it quite seriously. We budget a lot of money, have a lot of people who think about nuclear deterrence, and I'm very glad that work's being done, and I rate the chance of a nuclear war in my lifetime as being fairly low. Uh, I rate the chance of a widespread epidemic far worse than Ebola in my lifetime is well over 50%. If we look at the 20th century and we look at the death chart of the 20th century, I think everybody would say, oh yeah, there must be a spike for World War I. You know, sure enough, there it is, like 25 million. And there must be a big spike for World War II, and there it is, it's like 65 million. But then you'll see this other spike that is as large as World War II, right after World War I. And most people, a lot of people would say, well, what, <laughs> what was that? There's two kinds of flus. There's flus that spread between humans very effectively. And there's flus that kill lots of people. And those two properties have only been combined uh, into a widespread flu once in history. Well, that is Spanish flu. We have no idea where it came from. It's called the Spanish flu because the Spanish press was the freest. They were the first to talk openly about it. And so in the annals of epidemic history, that's the big event. I funded a disease modeling group that uses computer simulation. And that work has been phenomenal in helping us target our polio eradication resources and you know which parts of Nigeria should we work harder on. And it's very natural if you have a group like that to say, hey, look at something like the Spanish flu in the modern day. Health systems are far better. And so you think, hey, that wouldn't be very bad. Well, we tried it. And, and there are some assumptions we had to make. But what we showed is that the force of infection because of modern transport, which compared to 1918 is over 50 times as great. And so if you get something like a flu and you look at that map of how within days, it's basically in all urban centers of the entire globe, that is very uh, uh, eye-opening. That didn't happen with Spanish flu in the past. opportunity to do more than just let it run its course is really only in the last decade. Basically, when you talk about drugs, you can talk about small molecules or talk about these complex biological protein-like things, of which there's a subclass called antibodies. Antibodies are the molecules that the immune system naturally builds to attack disease. Today, the idea that somebody says, oh, here's an antibody, make a lot of it, make it very quickly, that's right on the cutting edge. And the Ebola epidemic showed me that we're not ready for a serious epidemic, an epidemic that would be more infectious and would spread faster than Ebola did. This is the greatest risk of a huge tragedy. This is the most likely thing by far to kill over 10 million excess people in a year. We don't need to invest nearly what we do in military preparedness. This is something where less than a billion a year on R&D, medical surveillance, uh, standby personnel, cross-training the military so they can play a role in terms of 
all the logistics here. This can be done, and we may not get many more warnings like this one to, to say, okay, it's a pretty modest investment to avoid something that really, in terms of the, the human condition, would be a, a gigantic setback. to watch it again um yes please yes yes okay yes yes please why don't you describe for me as vividly as you can what it is you're worried about what it is that the nightmare scenario looks like Fortunately, there's very few things, and most of them are very low probability. Uh, you know, some big volcanic explosion, uh, gigantic earthquake, asteroid. But at least in the nuclear case, you've got to say we take it quite seriously. We budget a lot of money, have a lot of people who think about nuclear deterrence, and I'm very glad that work's being done, and I rate the chance of a nuclear war in my lifetime as being fairly low. Uh, I rate the chance of a widespread epidemic far worse than Ebola in my lifetime is well over 50%. If we look at the 20th century and we look at the death chart of the 20th century, I think everybody would say, oh yeah, there must be a spike for World War I. You know, sure enough, there it is, like 25 million. And there must be a big spike for World War II, and there it is, it's like 65 million. But then you'll see this other spike that is as large as World War II, right after World War I. And most people, a lot of people would say, well, what, <laughs> what was that? There's two kinds of flus. There's flus that spread between humans very effectively. And there's flus that kill lots of people. And those two properties have only been combined uh, into a widespread flu once in history. Well, that is Spanish flu. We have no idea where it came from. It's called the Spanish flu because the Spanish press was the freest. They were the first to talk openly about it. And so in the annals of epidemic history, that's the big event. I funded a disease modeling group that uses computer simulation. And that work has been phenomenal in helping us target our polio eradication resources and you know which parts of Nigeria should we work harder on. And it's very natural, if you have a group like that, to say, hey, look at something like the Spanish flu in the modern day. Health systems are far better. And so you think, hey, that wouldn't be very bad. Well, we tried it, and, and there are some assumptions we had to make. But what we showed is that the force of infection because of modern transport, which compared to 1918, is over 50 times as great. And so if you get something like a flu, and you look at that map of how within days, it's basically in all urban centers of the entire globe. That is very uh, uh, eye-opening. That didn't happen with Spanish flu in the past. The opportunity to do more than just let it run its course is really only in the last decade. Basically, when you talk about drugs, you can talk about small molecules or talk about these complex biological protein-like things, of which there's a subclass called antibodies. Antibodies are the molecules that the immune system naturally builds to attack disease. Today, the idea that somebody says, oh, here's an antibody, make a lot of it, make it very quickly, that's right on the cutting edge. And the Ebola epidemic showed me that we're not ready for a serious epidemic, an epidemic that would be more infectious and would spread faster than Ebola did. This is the greatest risk of a huge tragedy. This is the most likely thing by far to kill over 10 million excess people in a year. We don't need to invest nearly what we do in military preparedness. This is something where less than a billion a year on R&D, medical surveillance, uh, standby personnel, cross-training the military so they can play a role in terms of all the logistics here. This can be done, and we may not get many more warnings like this one to, to say, okay, it's a pretty modest investment to avoid something that really, in terms of the, the human condition, would be a, a gigantic setback.
This was not the video you watched before, right, Victor? No, it's not the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in terms of himself, so mm -hmm. uh, personal thinking, he expressed that he was afraid about time, but his time in this earth, yeah. on this earth. Mm -hmm. Do you know when was recorded that say, video? Uh, no. It says that was before, no, before the pandemic or during the pandemic? It's according to YouTube, it was uploaded in 2015. 2015, okay. Yeah. It was a kind of, you know, forecast of what would happen in 2020, right? Yeah. Bill Gates uh, said that uh, that will not um, happen in his lifetime. So he stays, he stayed as a clown. Uh, in, risk, in risk management, those uh, kind of, uh, Situations called the black swan. Nobody think about it until it happened. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. What can you infer, guys, based on uh, Bill Gates' words? What was the question? What can you infer based on Bill Gates' words? Uh, well, that he has more information than the, the other people. I think that um, invest in global health mm -hmm. is less expensive than a military investment. And it's better for humanity. What was your question, teacher? Sorry. What can you infer based on Bill Gates' words? How do you spell unfair? I, I, I didn't catch the word. Right. Infer. What will be the meaning of that unfair? Okay, infer guys is like for example when you don't when you don't have like something really uh, explicit. So there's a message uh, behind words, so you infer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, a pandemic spread or a pandemic breakout can kill more people than a world war um, by the pandemic is less expensive than, um, than military investments. Yeah. I what? think that is the main idea. Yes. Why, why people called a the Spanish flu. Because Spanish, Spain was the first country, according to what he said, uh, to speak yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. another, another thing that I can infer. That mm -hmm. that would, yeah, infer, yeah. Mm -hmm. Would be that uh, according to what he said, we are not ready to any type of pandemic. Uh, and you know, that was back in 2015. And, and now you see uh, the, at the end of, uh, since the end of uh, 2019 and, and nowadays that we are passing through a very difficult situation and, and we were not ready to, uh, to face you know, that big problem. That was a, a global problem that show us, shows us that um, we are far away, you know, to, we are like, yeah, far away um, from what we have to be done to avoid this kind of uh, issues. Yeah. As yeah. Uh, what do you think, uh, let's see, Frank, did you watch the video? Were you able to watch it? Just, just a part of it. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting the way that Bill Gates used the information that they have with his organization in order to make this kind of forecast even before that all of this pandemic happened. Because as he said in the video, they've got a model that they try to reply to see what could happen in this time 
if a uh, outbreak of Spanish flu uh, could happen in, in nowadays. So for him and his organization was interesting to uh, see that if that's true, we've got right now a better technology and uh, developed and tools in order to face this kind of illness. The thing is that there are more uh, channels where the virus can be spread. So yeah. it will be more difficult. Yeah. Uh, which pandemic, guys, do you think um, has been a worse? The Spanish flu or the one we we went through and we are going through? COVID-19. Definitely a Spanish flu. Why? Because now... Because the number of deaths, 30, more than 30 million of deaths around the world. Mm -hmm. And COVID, it's about 2 million of deaths. I think uh, we are we are far uh, yet to conclude any any mm -hmm. kind of number because we are passing through this pandemic still. Uh, maybe once uh, all countries you know, apply any kind of vaccine against uh, the virus, we can say okay, we stop it, and now we have some numbers to to show you know which one has been worst. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, I think it's uh, it's not a right time to say. Um, with numbers so talking about that yeah but uh, so far covid death rate is lower than other pandemic in the past it's not about um, the number of death i think uh, today we have more information we have more scientifics that, that are um investigate about these things right uh, we don't know if the COVID in that time called uh, produce more deaths, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but nowadays, for example, in, in that time, uh, some people believe that it was um, a, a, that it was a castigo. How do you say that? Uh, punishment. Punishment. A punishment from God. Mm -hmm. Curse, right? <laughs> So it was a punishment okay. from a uh, from from because you have a bad behavior with God, and today nobody believes that COVID is a punishment from God, right? So uh, are different times, I think. The Black Death, that was people thought that comes from from heaven because humanity behavior against God. Yeah. Oh, well, and do you think, guys, that uh, with the with a with a new uh, resolution, uh, I mean, something uh, uh, that the government is working on uh, about the vaccine, do you think that we are going to be able to 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 recover from from this disease until December twenty two, right? Mm -hmm. It says the about eco, no about economy is like in five years we're mm -hmm. gonna establish like before, but in another like the normal activity, for example, in February of of this year is in December of 2022. I read about that, but I don't know. Okay. Any other point of view? I'm sorry, Jaime, what was the question? The, what do you think about the, the new resolution, okay, about the vaccine in order to, to, to kill the virus, right? In order to uh, get rid of this. So do you think that we're going to be able to, to recover from this pandemic that's gonna take between two and three years. Um, at least for the economies, and mm -hmm. especially, and you know, if you live in a third country, um, 
third, third world country that might take more time, like maybe four years. Or some some an analysts said that could be also a decade. Yeah. So, so I think it's, I mean, and also depends when, um, if, the, if, the, if the vaccine is going to be effective. Mm -hmm. That would be another thing, you know, uh, the vaccines might be there, but um, at the end, you don't know if they have been, uh, they have been uh, tested uh, enough or uh, if that will be, you know, really effective at the end. Are you willing to use it when it's not available? Right no, not right now. Not right now. No. Okay. I think so I wanna you're going to, you're it. going, you prefer to wait for, yes. for some results right at the beginning to mm -hmm. see if, if, if this really works. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what do you think, Armando? Armando, do you hear me? Armando, are you there? Do you hear me? Guys, do you hear me? Yes, yes. I, I think yes, that Armando yes, is on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's on the phone. Okay, all right. Well, guys, um, in the exercise number five, you have some questions. Okay, can you please, Lopez, read the first one, letter A? What are the chances of an epidemic worse than Ebola according to Bill Gates in his lifetime? Mm -hmm. Okay, letter B, Lisandro. Uh, letter B. Uh, let me see. That, sorry, I was, I, was, I was taking another thing. Okay. <laughs> I, I rate that one. Mm. Do you have the, the, the PDF? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's exercise number five, okay. question B. Uh, okay, what are the two types of, of flus? Okay, all right. What about letter C, uh, Walter? Why is the Spanish flu called this way? Okay, all right. Uh, letter D, Becker. <clears throat> uh, why would any epidemic nowadays spread quicker than the than in the 20th century okay 20th 20th century yeah, 20th. can i can i repeat it please yeah sure go ahead why would any epidemic nowadays spread quicker than the than in the 20th century mm -hmm. 20th century okay 20th. yeah 20th uh, letter e um carlos santos Hello? Letter E, can you please read the question? Yep. Wait a minute. Um, teacher, I don't know why my computer doesn't open the, the file. Mm, okay. I've been trying about 10 minutes. All right, Johnny. So I can. Please read the question. How be of an investment in preparing for an epi the epidemic can make a difference. Read the question again, please. How be of an invest investment in preparing for an for an epidemic can make a difference. Okay, read oh the question God. again one more time. How be how be of an um, an investment in preparing for an epidemic epidemic can make a difference. Okay, how big, how, how big, big of an investment, of an investment, uh, yes. Of an investment. How big of an investment in preparing for an epidemic can make a difference, can make a how difference. How big of an investment in preparing for an epidemic can make a difference. Okay, how big, how big of an investment, of an investment. Of an investment. Over. How yes. be over an investment. investment? Okay. How be over an investment in preparing for 
an epidemic que me haya dicho. Okay, for, a, uh -huh, for an epidemic. For, for, a, an, for, an, epi oh, for an epidemic. For an epidemic que me haya different. Mm -hmm. Can make a difference, okay? I need to read more. Yeah. The Lincoln sounds, right? The Lincoln yeah. sounds. Yeah, that is uh, too difficult to me. Yeah. Okay. Do you remember that we were sitting the Lincoln sounds when you were having classes face to face? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, well, guys, can you please go over the answers? I'm going. I'm going to give you uh, some minutes. Okay. Five minutes, so you can answer these questions. Santos. Yep. <laughs> what happened? Tomorrow is your son. I believe in God in the time of exam. Did you finish? Yep. Okay. All right. So, Armando, uh, the first one. Yeah. Uh, as far as I understood, what are the chances of an epidemic worse than ever, according to Bill Gates in his lifetime? I understood 50% of likelihood. Okay. Do you agree with Armando or you have a different answer? I, have so, I agree. Over the 50. That is the correct one. As well over fifty. Over mm -hmm. over fifty percent. Yeah, yeah. it's not fifty percent. It's over fifty percent. Mm -hmm. Over fifty percent chance. Okay. All right. What about? All right. Letter, okay. What about letter B, uh, Lopez? What are the two types of flus? I don't. I don't remember. I was watching the video, but the other guys were speaking in the moment they were saying it, so I didn't hear. I don't know the answer. Okay. Who has the answer? Can I help you? Yeah. Hi. Okay, Johnny. Uh, one is flu that's spread between human. And the second, I understand flu that kills a lot of people. Okay. I Do you agree? Do you agree or you disagree with Johnny? I agree. I agree as well. Did you repeat it because I didn't understand? 
Okay, fluids that are spread between humans, that is one. Yeah. And the that second, fluids that human. kills a lot of people. Yeah, fluids that spread between humans. Okay. Okay, fluids that spread, okay, yeah, very fast. That is the first one, right? And the second one, the fluids that are deadly. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. The coronavirus has the the characteristics of the first one, right? The first one and the second one. A little of the second one. It's a mix. Yeah. Combined. Combination. Mm -hmm. I can answer the third one. <laughs> <laughs> it was the easiest one. Okay. Point. All right. Well, go ahead, uh, Lopez because the Spanish press was the first to speak openly about it. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. Uh, letter D, Becker. Let me open the file again because I'm in my cell phone. It says, why would any epidemic know they spread quicker than in the 20th century? Uh, because uh, nowadays we have more people in the world we have more more urban uh, towns or cities around the world. So uh, the the ways or the channels to to be to to that could make that that could make uh, that epidemic proceeds uh, between continents. Uh, the possibility of that is even more than uh, a century ago. Okay. They could add because the modern transportation. Exactly, because of modern transport. Mm -hmm. I would because say I would say that not just what he said, but because of globalization, mm -hmm. because that was the the thing that uh, made uh, COVID, for example, the worst. Because there are uh, too many flights a day for uh, every every everywhere in the world, so. That, that's why the, the spread was so fast and it reached so many places because of, of, of modern transport. But I think that is because of mother of, of, of globalization, I think, mm -hmm. because I suppose that uh, coronavirus is, is, it can live in plastic surfaces and surfaces and metal surfaces and things like that. So it can travel with people, with things. So basically it's because of globalization. Okay, what about the last one? Uh, Frank, do you have the answer? I will try. I would say that it's important in order to develop the uh, necessary resources in order to face the epidemic, for example, to invest in researches to find a, a I forgot the, the word, cura, sorry. The cure. The cure. Cure. The cure, to find a cure or um, giving training to uh, doctors or all of the people involved to okay. fight against the virus directly. So that's what I got, but I'm not sure if it's the, the answer or not. Okay, all right. Um, who has a more specific answer? I recall that uh, Bill Gates says that like a modest investment not sure if he said a million or a billion of dollars, but not sure about the specific amount that he said. He made a, he made a comparison, I guess, uh, that we should be investing the same as uh, we invest in military force. And I guess. Okay. Less than one billion, guys. Less than one billion a year. Okay, 
less than one billion a year. Can you imagine? Worldwide? Or just talking about US? USA. No, I don't I don't think it's is is worldwide. So he's talking about the USA, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, you have some phrases in the exercise number six. Uh, the first one is a widespread disease. Um, what does he mean? Well, in the first one is a kind of disease that is easy uh, for contagious people. Widespread is like it's uh, spread, it's spread all over the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like for example, COVID. Worldwide. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, what about a, an outbreak with flu? What's outbreak? Uh, it's, it's a like kind a, of speak of flu. Like a sudden increase? Mm -hmm. It's a sudden, it's a sudden increase. Yes. Increase. Mm -hmm. Yes. Increase, Walter, is the, is the noun. Increase. It's is the, the verb. verb. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Like, for example, uh, um, decrease and decrease, which is pretty much the same, same case, right? Okay. So, uh, what about uh, the third one, the third phrase? An infect infection. An infectious disease. Infectious. Infectious disease. What is that is transmitted to people? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about the next one? What oh, was an, an infectious disease? The immune system. Immune system is uh, those uh, systems that reject, you know, virus or bacteria. So that is something like the immunologic system? Or that word doesn't exist, teacher? Of course. Of, of course it is. Mm -hmm. It exists. So it exists. It, it has to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it does. Uh, Lopez, what, what did you ask? What was the the infectious disease? Okay. Is is COVID a, an infectious disease? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so a disease that is a spread, right? Okay. Or you can uh, spreadable. You can get it. Yeah, get it um, by having contact with the uh, with another person. When you when you uh, we refer to pasar la gripe, would you say surpass or pass? Like if it was a pass, I mean, you have it, now you have it. Would you say it pass or should pass or it doesn't apply in this context? context? Let me check it out because I'm not sure. Surpass, you said? Yeah, I... I S-U-R-P-A-S-S? -S? 
yeah, surpass something like that. No, that term doesn't apply. Would be past then, or yes, pass, pass, pass. Mm -hmm. Or when you get infected. Yeah. Okay, what about the last one, guys? What about the last one? The malaria eradication. What is that? The eradication is when you stop the spread of the virus, right? Mm -hmm. Eradication through a uh, vaccination campaign. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay, very good. Any question, guys, or comment so far? No. Okay. In the number four, the pronunciation, it's the immune. Uh -huh. so, the immune. Immune. Yes. Okay. Immune. Mm. Yes. Remember that when you have this added. Mm -hmm. This article, do you remember this article? Is this article a... Indefinite or definite? Indefinite. Is it definite or indefinite? Indefinite. Indefinite. This is, this is a basic question, a basic grammar question. It's definite. 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 Yes, in the articles are A and N. Okay, so when you have a, this article, when you have this article and a, right after this article, you have a noun that starts with a, a vowel, so the pronunciation is the, but when you have the same article right after um, a consonant, you say the. Do you remember? Uh, for that reason, yeah, yeah, I remember. Maybe for that reason I was confused and I think that was uh, indefinite. No, but this is a definite article. Definite, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when the You're article is indefinite, teacher, mm -hmm. yeah. when the article is indefinite, it only has one sound. Uh, yeah. Okay. Like for example, uh, a computer, right? A computer, an apple. Okay. So you are not defining what computer or what apple. It can be whatever. Okay. All right. So uh, let's go over the questions that we have for um, for discussion, uh, what about the first one? Do you agree with Bill Gates that we should be afraid of an outbreak of some epidemic? Why or why not? Now that we know what is an epidemic, <laughs> a real epidemic, mm -hmm. I think that maybe not afraid, but precautious. It would be the word that you conscious heard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, precaution, precaution, is that a word? Conscious. No. Precavidos, 
I don't know what, what would be the word. Precautious. Precautious, right? Precautious. Yeah. So not maybe not afraid of, of a, a pandemic or an outbreak, but precautious about it because uh, what this year has taught us is that definitely we were not uh, uh, prepared for something like, like, like this, but we need to grow uh, conscious about it and we need to start applying measures about it. So not be afraid because if we are afraid of it, again, if it happens again, uh, uh, fear is what makes you rec reckless, right? And mm -hmm. stupid reckless. To, mm -hmm. and, and to act stupidly. So I think that I disagree with him because of that, because we don't need to be afraid. We need to be calm and we need to be, uh, we need to act smart about it. That's what we need to do, not to be afraid. Mm, okay. I totally uh, agree with Lopez. I, you're, you're, you agree, Baker? Or you yeah, disagree? I agree. I agree with Lopez. We have to be smart. We have to, to manage. We have to handle. We have to face the situation we have right now instead of being afraid of uh, the situation. It, it is. It was comprobated that humanity can face uh, this type of of this kind of of situations, and being afraid of that uh, will make us and weak and we don't need uh, that anymore i think that we have technology we have communications uh, we have uh, channels of communication in order to to um to act uh, 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 with us uh, with uh, with with your or or brain and we have to be smart i think we can be smart in order to uh, handle the situation I think that th this is not the end of the world and we will survive. So being afraid uh, of that is definitely useless. So I agree okay. with, with Lopez. In my so opinion, in my so opinion, uh, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, sorry. Well, just on my, on giving my opinion about this. Well, uh, you know, um, People should be afraid of some outbreak of some epidemic because there is no a kind of health issue, but also it's an economic issue. Mm -hmm. So that the reason why people should be afraid and of course act uh, and look for solutions that can help the humanity for uh, you know facing this disease and yeah. then plan mm -hmm. and invest. In, in R and D for the future. H however, people is not uh, aware what will become, what will come. I mean, uh, in the future. So uh, that's uh, the you know uncertainty about the the what is expected in the coming years. Yeah. That's my opinion. That's a, that's a really good point of view because I think. Personally, I think that uh, people maybe are not afraid of having an outbreak of COVID, but uh, they're afraid of the impact that this virus has had in different areas. Yeah, so it's what I'm. It's mm -hmm. what I was talking about. If you, uh, it is normal. It's natural to feel to feel uh, afraid of things, to feel fe fear of things, of unknown things and situations. But the thing is that, I think that in this point, humanity has grown into a, a point that we have gone far uh, further enough to uh, stop being just afraid, you know? Uh, we are supposed to, to, I mean, we are supposed to, to be uh, aware of things that can happen. For example, uh, 
when you start saving money, maybe you don't, you don't do it because you feel that it's going to happen something bad or, or because it's something is telling you that something bad is going to happen. You're supposed to do it because of habit, you know? And uh, things happen and, and, and they, they are not good or bad. They, ju they are just, they just happen. You decide if they are bad or not. Um, and I guess that this is just natural selection, you know? Those who are prepared mentally and economically, physically to handle it will do it. Those who won't, won't do it. And it is just a natural process. You can fight it. You, you are not supposed to fear it. And you just have to face it and try to do your best. That's what I think. Because as I said before, my, my first opinion is that if you are afraid and you live in fear because of that, then you start acting reckless. Then you start doing stupid things. Then you, instead of finding solutions, you create more problems. And that's why fear is not a, a, a thing that you should uh, live with. It's, it's facing fear is what you have to do. I think that's what I think. Okay. Any other opinion? Okay. Do you think that uh, globally we're prepared for such in infectious diseases? No. <laughs> Absolutely not, right? No. We improve. <laughs> we have no, not a clue in, in, in any field, not in health field, economic fields, in work fields, in any, in any aspect in life. Yeah, not even more developed countries. No. Uh, we're prepared, right? And not, not even following the basic rules. As an example, you have uh, the countries in Europe, they know how the, this virus spreads out, but they keep insisting in following the same life they had before. Mm -hmm. You can see people uh, walking around the beach or just going out to the malls or shopping centers or something like that. And just very few people using uh, their mask. Other people just going without any mask, uh, without having any type of uh, caution. Uh, and you can, I, I follow some YouTubers uh, because I like to see videos for, from uh, England and from Madrid. And you can see a lot of people over there just walking like anything is happening. It's like a normal life. Actually, they, I think there is a movement against using masks. But as I said, Jaime, it is a natural selection process. You know, those who are uh, avoiding the situation or just ignoring it, those are the ones that are going to get uh, finished, you know, by the, by the situation. But those who are cautious and that learn something or that learned something of what this year happened i think that that's how you evolve right as a race as a as humanity i think frank what do you think well definitely we're not prepared to face this kind of situation. We are, we are still learning how to handle it, but at a certain time, we were, we will able to get out of this situation 
we have to be patient and learn as much as we can because all of the world as we known before will change or has been changing so we have to understand that as well we maybe we uh, won't be able to get our life as before but we have to adapt to the new reality mm -hmm. and try to keep going because before it happened for example with the spanish flu some things uh, changed and of course in this situation a lot of things will change so we have to adapt to the new reality that's what i think okay yeah you're right something else is that uh we are always looking for only the cure and not how to avoid the infection and uh, humankind is also it's always looking for it's, it's not looking to prevent but it's only looking how to cure uh, the infectious we are not going one step ahead mm -hmm. we are always going one step behind and that's something that we need to consider too yeah exactly you know but, Chinese what, people they need uh -huh. to stop eating these kind of animals so. Yeah, what did you say? <laughs> like the meme, right? Yeah. What Chinese they people, they, they, they also need to, you know, have, they need to learn how to eat better. You know, they need to stop to eat, you know, all this kind of animal. I think that there is an evil, evil, you know, behavior in pharmaceutical directors that they're looking for, for more worthy, you know, uh, gains because it's different when you are selling a preventing medicine uh, a, instead of um, a cure like uh, nowadays with the COVID-19 vaccine. So uh, as you can re read in the newspaper, most of those uh, pharmaceutical are, you know, uh, registering the, the stock exchange, looking for more profit mm -hmm. uh, because when they, launch uh, the vaccines you know the value of that stock that stock will be increased uh, well i don't know how much however uh, that is the expectation of those companies so there is an, an ethical you know uh, discussion there uh, among those people who are deciding when and how launch the covid19 uh, uh, vaccine yeah that is really sad because imagine people are just trying to get rich uh, for selling you a vaccine instead of trying to avoid these type of things. It's like, I don't care what you are passing through. Um, what I care is that I can be rich by giving you this thing. So as uh, Carlos said, that is not ethical. Just uh, making a parenthesis, uh, uh, Lisandro is stop eating. Stop eating, okay. Yeah, stop eating. Thank you. Okay, stop eating. Because, I mean, uh, it's something that they shouldn't do anymore, right? Okay, so, mm -hmm. so stop eating. Those kind of animals. <laughs> Okay, Anguali, so like, something like that. What? Anguali, or what's the name of that of the that animal where they they think the the, the virus came from? Anguilin, Anguilin, something like that. What was the name, guys? Pangolin. Pangolin. Pangolin is a kind yeah. of uh, you yeah. know uh, like uh, or kusuko here, similar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay so uh, in conclusion guys what can we what can be done to stop the spread of a disease uh, globally in the 21st century uh, i think we need to be disciplined discipline discipline yes because uh, there are a lot of people and i am including uh, don't respect the the, the the rule and 
and prefer to to go and enjoy even when there, there are a lot of people is care about your health. Okay. That's my opinion. What do you think, no, Carlos Santos? We need to plan ahead. We need to plan. We need to plan ahead, and we need to think that this is going to be a reality that we can face again. Once we pass this one, you know that the, um, maybe we will pass another one. We will have another one in the future. So it means that we will have to um, invest uh, as a country or or as a region, um, and it it must be included in the health budget. I guess health system budget uh, to adjust to you know what might happen in the future. Okay. In the case of, uh, well, in my opinion, I, one of the articles that um, caught my attention was one of Stanford that says that uh, this, this uh, reality was caused because uh, the global warming. And it was very interesting because the, the guy who eat a bat, right, uh, there in, in China, was because he need to uh, view another option that it doesn't have in, in the city, right? For example, why we are uh, eating some animals because there, there is no um, too much cow or, or pig or another animal that we constantly eat, right? And, um, and I think that the global warming are affecting us in, in in many ways, right? The other thing that, in my opinion, uh, for Latin America, this was like a final exam. And uh, it's like, if you start studying from one day to another, it's impossible to pass. And that's what's happening in, Ameri in Latin, Ameri Latin America, right? Mm -hmm. And every country uh, didn't pass the exam because we weren't prepared, right? And that's a, is the cost of all the corruption that we a, have, we, we have, right, a, in, this, in this region. And it's really, we can't ask to our medics a, for miracles, right? And the first months was really hard for them. That's. And the, the most sadly true is that uh, Latin America in this uh, situation, uh, the government, all the governments, right, in, in not, not only from El Salvador, didn't ponerse um, uh, acuerdo, didn't make uh, like a team they, they, they didn't agree. For, the, for the poorest. They didn't exactly uh, get in agree for. Agree. for for pushing up the country, right? Um, and I don't know why we, we have the, the government that we have in, in all aspects, right? In not only in El Salvador, in all Latin America, we have a really, a really bad people, right? Taking the most important decisions for, for, for us and for the most poorest people in Latin America, yeah. Okay, so do you think guys that uh, this virus was a, a created by, by that fact that uh, a Chinese person uh, ate that kind of animal or you think it was uh, a laboratory disease or a laboratory virus? I think it was a laboratory virus. I'm not a conspiracy guy, but it is it is logic to to think that way, because if that if that were natural, it would be or it has to it would had uh, to appear uh, years ago, because the if the virus. W uh, where in the in the animals um, since a lot of of, of years ago, um, it has to appear. It has to be. It had to appear uh, before 
than now. But it appears, it appeared, I mean, um, delivery, uh, belligery, I mean, in this year at a moment that when China is doing some, uh, some uh, uh, beginning some projects in order to take the, the, the control of the markets, the control of the, of the business, uh, commercial business around the world. So mm -hmm. I think that it, it have some, it, it makes some sense that yeah. it have, it could be, could have be created in a laboratory. Okay. Well, this is not the first coronavirus, right? In Wuhan, uh, there was a starting difference coronavirus. Right, this is one of the family, and it's named COVID nineteen because it's a coronavirus of two thousand nineteen. But mm -hmm. um, there are ten types of coronavirus. I heard about that. This is actually the cause, the SARS COVID nineteen. I think that it's called because the first one was uh, SARS back in two thousand two or four. I don't remember. No, well, I don't know. Um, but well, um, there is a, this is a technical vocabulary, but uh, there is a, a girl who was from China, a Chinese girl who was uh, working in that lab laboratory and nowadays is under the government uh, of the United States. It's in Asilo Politico um, mm -hmm. and it's investigated and she gave some, um, recently she gave some uh, news, no, some, declar some words to the, to the, to the news um, mm -hmm. and says that he thinks that she thinks that uh, it was, in, was made from the human, right? Was human made, sorry. So Asylum. That's the that's the word, Carlos. Oh, okay, thank you. Asylum. Asylum. Yes. Asylum. Yes, teacher. In my Asylum. opinion. Asylum. Mm -hmm. Teacher, in my opinion, I consider uh, the virus was created for the the big potential because uh, there are a lot of people in our world. And imagine Trump, he he prefer the the people that a lot of people die instead of uh, instead of uh, look uh, look for a solution, and it's obviously because he prefer to to uh, the then the American people stay better because there are a lot of people. There isn't, there are in the, that country. For the, for the reason I consider it was created. Was created? Yeah, was created. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey Baker, why do you say that? Why did I say what? That your English is even worse today. Oh, um, I I feel that I think you're uh, nervous. A, a little, and I and I feel uh, as I have some problems with my vocabulary, with my fluency and my pronunciation. Mm -hmm. uh, it has to. It it could be a a nervous issue because of the the certification for tomorrow. I don't know something. Yeah, something. <laughs> And having a parenthesis, right? Uh, I, I would like to, to to give you some feedback, right? Based on a word that I have heard that you uh, overused, okay? And the word is uh, proceed. Okay. You use this word a uh, feeling of times, proceed. But what's proceed? How can you use proceed in context? To continue with to something. Continue, exactly, to continue with something. 
okay, uh, to go on, okay? Uh, sometimes uh, the context um, doesn't apply uh, in order to use this, this, this vocabulary, right? This word, okay? okay. But uh, also you can, you can say behave. Hate. Behave. Behave. Mm -hmm. Behave. Oh, behave. That yes. is the, like something like um, the. Like, like for example, like for example, now now that we are talking about uh, diseases or illnesses, so uh, diseases have different behavior. Okay. Mm -hmm. They have different behavior. So when I when I'm talking about behavior, I'm talking about um, conduct. Exactly, I, I'm talking about a, a conduct. Conduct, a attitude, conduct. right? Uh -huh. A conduct. Okay, uh, I'm talking about the the symptoms, right? Okay, so proceed is like, mm, yeah, it's continue, it's gone. A, something a little bit more formal, okay? Like, for example, how a company is going to proceed in order to solve a problem. Yeah, I think that that is the reason that because that I uh, use that word frequently because mm -hmm. I, I, used, I, use it, I use it a lot in my work. But sometimes you use, you use it as, as, a, as a reaction. Right. Yes. I mean, the, the way you're going to uh, act out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I can use, so uh, we can um, the word behave. Yeah, you can, I use, can the use in, in for in, example, in the, in the can I, you, I can you. Okay, uh, can you bring me a, an example of a phrase using behave? Okay, the one I gave you. Mm. Oh, we can say uh, the Spanish flu okay. uh, had the same behavior or a similar behavior, had a Than similar behavior uh huh. A uh, two coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Two coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Uh, because I'm, I know that that's already. <laughs> but thank you too much, teacher, for the feedback. Okay. All right, and I hope you you'll do good. Okay. I'll tell you. Uh, I will notice you tomorrow. Oh, is the uh, certification going tomorrow? Okay. All right. Okay, very good. Well, guys, uh, let's go over the the attendance. Okay, Hector Alvarez, missing. Jonathan Cruz, present. Walter Figueroa. Present. Victor Garcia. Present. Manuel Gomez. Excused. Freddy Enriquez. Freddy was here, right? Yes. Okay. Marlon Hernandez. Okay, missing. Hector Lopez. Here I am, teacher. Bea Mendoza. Missing. Carlos Navas. Here, yeah, yeah. teacher. Okay. Just, uh, I, I, I'm not sure you recorded my uh, assistant yesterday, but because uh, suddenly uh, my internet is connected session. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Okay, Esmeralda Perez. Missing. Lisandro Ramos. Present. Okay, Francisco Salazar. Present. Carlos Santos. 
Present. Okay. Baker Granados. I'm here. Okay. All right, guys. So this is it for today's lesson. Uh, get ready for tomorrow, okay? You're gonna have a, an exam about week number one okay. and two. Okay. 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 Thank you, Thank you teacher. Right. Take you care. Have yeah. Have right. uh, good evening. Thank you, teacher. Bye. 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 Hey, teacher. Bye, Carlos. Bye.